Yeah, we're live. We're live here on World Viral TV. This is Music Buzz Live Radio. My name's Moose CT over there on the boards. Um, we've just been talking about the Ice Bucket Challenge. And I'm not going to lie. I, I, I did the Ice Bucket Challenge about two weeks ago. All right, I'm old school. And now the Ice Bucket Challenge is completely out of hand. It's out of control, actually. But yeah. I did hear that it's raised millions of dollars for ALS research. Which, so which it is actually cool. is working. Yeah, that is I, cool. I hear all these all these complainers on social media saying that it's just wasting water and it's not doing anything and why don't you just donate to the charity? But millions of people actually are donating to the charity. Yeah, I mean, you can look at it as a success story if you see it for the uh, its effectiveness at reaching a lot of people quickly. Yeah, absolutely. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have you talk for one second. Okay. Oh, thanks, Tim. Yeah, I was thinking it'd be cool. Um, I'm going to go off on a tangent. Tim just left. I thought it'd be cool. I mean, I should probably actually do this, but I don't have time, guys. I just don't have time. Um, you take a... No, maybe I should do this. We'll see. Anyway, uh, we've been chilling down here in the basement of Herman's Hideaway. There's a show upstairs. I could probably pull it up and you can see what's going on. Um, you're tuned into worldviral.tv. This is Music Buzz Live Radio with your host, Moose, who's outside that back door. And you can see it right here. Out there. Anyway, um, that's cool. I'm black and white. We're having a good time down here in the studio. We have, uh, I think, uh, 15 minutes left of show, so we should rock something. Oh, there's a, there's Tim. We're black and white, well, dude. I pushed So the what just happened was... Uh, Corey Montgomery just called me back, and they said they cannot be here until 9.30 to do this radio interview, so. 9.30? So sorry, sir. So sorry. Yeah, my kid's got to get to bed. i got to spend yeah, a I, second with her, dude. i got to get high and go to the grocery store. All kinds of stuff's got to happen tonight. I don't know why this side is black and white, dude. It's kind of cool. That kind of looks cool, though. It's cool when you take it from that to that, you know. Yay. So what are you doing tonight after the show? I'm gonna I'm gonna hang out here probably for for a little bit, give out some tickets to and, and talk to some people, meet the bands and stuff, and then uh, going grocery shopping with my lovely lady. Gonna probably take the dog to the park. That's cool. Is it? It's light outside. It's getting darker earlier. Yeah, it's, it's start. It's slowly starting to. But uh, I've really been getting into the nighttime like neighborhood walks with the dog. Like we we just go. I recently moved out to the suburbs so I can just walk endlessly through a neighborhood and it'll never stop. It's nice to get lost and you have to look up and you're at, oh, okay, what street am I on? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Good, good for the, good time with your lady and your dog. The dog loves the that dog. shit. The dog loves it. I'm pushing buttons over here, man. I'm going to, see, I'm black and white. Whew. Everything's black and white. That's pretty cool. I want to know where's Chad. I haven't seen him in like two weeks, three weeks. He's been here recently, you know, he's been here recently. He was here, I guess he was here two weeks ago when you were here. He but was here last Friday. He you wasn't could, here last Wednesday on my show. You could check him out if you go to Shows on Demand on our website, worldviral.tv. It's a drop-down menu. Click on, on, or you could just search Chad. It works, guys. You can search Chad on our website and all everything that he's been involved with that's will his pop name. up. That's his tag, is just Chad. Chad Drew. Chad Drew. Chad Drew. And we tag Evergreen a few times just in good faith. And um, they're right down the street, dude. It's it's a cool place. It is a cool place. Good good bud too. Good stuff. So next week at Herman's, what's what's big next week, man? What's coming on? Next week we have five thirteen. They were on Trevor's show. They did a unplugged version of uh, one of their songs that's fully plugged in. But they're playing on the 29th. We have a Mr. Majestic's eight track revival in his Cavalcade of All Stars. That's one of the longest names. That I've worked with. Did you have to put that all on the ticket? I did, out of respect for the band. Yeah, it's it's listed all uh, graphic designer or whatever. Nice. But yeah, and then um, Peace of Mind is on that bill as well. They're an Iron Maiden tribute. Robbie the singer, Ronnie. Ronnie the singer is a amazing vocalist. He's kind of got that, I want to say Steve Perry vibe. You know, he hits the high notes really good. Okay, right on. Solid, solid vocalist. So I'm going to be here for that. Then I'm out of town. Um going to a wedding this weekend or next, next weekend? weekend yeah oh that'll be fun yeah good god it's like the year of weddings dude we're going to to six weddings this year we've already been to four we got two left one of which is in hawaii yeah an amazing thing an amazing thing it's all that, your peers you know yeah at that age where everybody i know is getting married 
Yeah. I'm just flipping the buttons here, dude. Uh, you know, everybody I know is getting married. I'm just trying to find my beer. It's working for you, man. You got your evening walk tonight, you know? Yeah. That's I'm going to ride my motorcycle home. It's going to be nice. Nice. It's a good night for that. Slow motorcycle. Hey, what's with everybody driving 20 miles an hour in a 30? You know, I don't know, man. I think, uh, you know what I think it could be is I think everybody is becoming paranoid of all the road bikers everywhere. Because the people riding their goddamn bicycles out way far off the curb, you got to like, especially when you're in these Denver neighborhoods where the streets are so narrow. And there's a lot of cycling. And there's two-way traffic. And then there's a fucking biker over here. It's ridiculous. Huh. Yeah, I've noticed that too. I've noticed that too. You know, and I don't, I, you know what, if you want to ride your bike, I'm all for sustainability, go for it. But I don't understand why would you ride your bike on Logan when you could go over one more street to Sherman or Washington where there's literally 5% of the traffic that there is on Logan? You know, I, um, I came prepared to, um, to bitch about this parking ticket that I got. Yeah, this guy yeah. Here. You spent most of your day at the parking magistrate. It, didn't it was you? actually pretty quick, man. They processed me very quickly. Did they avoid it? You know, I got I got to be careful how I tell the story because I want to believe my own take of it because I'm trying not to be bitter. You know, um, the ticket is for a hundred and fifty dollars. And how okay. did you get the ticket? All right, so I was here recording Spice One on Sunday night, and. Um, I was here pretty late. I went home. I looked around for parking. It's scarce as usual around where I live. Yeah, Capitol Hill. Yeah, between 10th and 11th, okay, on a on another street. So I uh, there was a two, this is important, there was a two-hour parking near my house, and I could have parked there and kind of taken a chance, you know, usually it's okay the next day, you know. Um, but I wanted to park correctly, and I wanted to do it right, and I wasn't afraid to walk a little while. So I, I went up to 14th Avenue, three blocks away from my house, right? I, I noticed on the right-hand side that people were parked, and there was an open spot right in front of the sign that has the, you know, no parking behind the sign, but you can park in front, you know, mm -hmm. with the arrow. And everybody else was parked there. I took the spot. It, looked, it was crystal clear. I did not see a sign that said, uh, I have this on my phone. It's like no parking between nine and five or whatever, and I don't. I think it's an ongoing thing. But long story short, I rolled up at uh, one ish, two ish when I was leaving to come here, and cops were standing there. So I walk, I walk up to the cops. You know, I'm like, hey, where's my car? You know, they're like, it's right there. They just, it's a short tow, is what they call it. It's a hundred dollar fee. Yeah. And I have a fifty dollar ticket for parking in a tow away zone. Right. I got it when I. When I parked that night, I got out of the car, I walked around, and I saw that the, the uh, no parking was on the other side of the alley. But I figured I was straight, man. I did not see a sign. So when I went to her today, you know, I had a good case. I was cool. She said, if, if, you're, if you're on vacation, that, that would be similar to this, you know. But they can post a sign whenever they want. So if you park, they can post a sign, act, like, after you park. I thought they had to give you a 12-hour notice if there's a new sign. Well, you know what? I... <sighs> Sadly, I, I kind of wanted to take this further, but it would have costed an extra thirty dollars if I lose. You know what I'm saying? So it'd be like a really 180. If so I, it's kind of like the NFL referee challenge. Like if you lose, they take your time out. Here, if you lose, you got to pay another thirty bucks. Yeah, dude. So the the magistrate was nice enough to drop it by thirty dollars, which is crap. It doesn't matter, you know. And I was trying to be, I was totally polite to her, dude. You know, hat off. Um, you know, thank you for your time. I appreciate this. I know this, you know, you're doing your job and this, you know, I was super polite. Yes, ma'am. And uh, she was nice too. She said uh, that she likes me and she wishes me the best, but she can't do anything. Like it's all set up, you know. So basically they can drop a um, tow away zone sign that's portable, like a cone, you know, on the side of the street. And anybody who's parked there who doesn't make it by that time in the middle of the day, like if they get home at four, because they worked late. If they get up while this tow-away thing, it's like one to five or something like that. I don't, I have a picture of it. But, um, yeah, you're screwed, dude. Like, you don't, maybe I should have taken it further. But uh, I guess I'm whipped into shape by, by the parking, by the violations bureau. Well, I mean, at the end of the day, it was only 120 bucks. Exactly. So is this the place where you're down, it's off Colfax or whatever, and you have to go in there, and they have the multiple different little offices that you go in, there's the guy that's seated up real high, and in, the, in your case, it was a lady. 
uh, and you're just kind of in there one on one with them, trying to plead your case, and they're kind of like a judge. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's it has airport security. I mean, you take your belt off, you yeah, take your yeah, wallet yeah, off, yeah. your wallet chain, and then you, you can, wait. Yeah, yeah, you take a number like the DMV. It's very government, but they have they have a lot of different departments. Like they have excise and license. Um, like food, I think runs out of there too. Wellington Web Building is where I went today. It was awesome. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Right on. Well, uh, at least it's over with then, right? Yeah, it's over with. Cool. I'm thinking, you know, I had to do that once, and I think I went down there and actually got my ticket dropped, but I had to leave and then come back because I didn't have, like, the right piece of paper or the right, you know, insurance. Maybe my insurance card that I had printed was expired. I don't remember what it was, but I had to leave. I had to go there, wait, do the belt check, whatever, then I pleaded my case. I don't remember what the case was. This was a few years ago. And then I came back, and the guy was like, don't come, don't wait in line again. Just, you know, wave at me or whatever, and I'll call you in. So I go in, I show him this, and then they voided my ticket. They voided it? Yes. See, she said that she, you know, she feels for me, and um, she could take care of the 50, but she can't take care of the 100 because that's a different department. Yeah. But, but a real judge, not, not the parking magistrate, a real judge could actually take care of that, but I was just afraid. But to I keep mean, that's pursuing, almost you know? more of a hassle, you know. Like, how much is too much when it comes? to Yeah, that, and then how much time are you really willing to put into it to save a hundred bucks? And you know, one time I was on the I was on the road with with my band Odie Paste, and we were driving to Denver actually from Durango, and we were in Bayfield, and I I was driving down this side road and then turned left onto another side road and got pulled over and told that I ran a stop sign uh, and, and I got a ticket for it and then I went back and walked around and there was no stop sign it was total bullshit um, and then but I was out of town for like two weeks and I did not I just ended up paying it because I didn't have the time or want to make the effort to go in there and fight against it even though I took photos on my phone yeah. of the intersection where there was not a stop sign yeah I didn't see a sign there was no sign there you know like it's retroactively um you know, you have to you have to see these things coming, I guess, to avoid one hundred fifty dollars tickets. Well, see, you just gotta t- bend it over and, t- and take one from the man every now and then. Yeah, know? I think that's that's what it boils down to. You know, I I even repeated to her. You know, I know driving is a privilege, not a right. You know, and, and parking is part of that. You know, I, I felt I feel like it's kind of unfair. I told her that straight up, man. And, and she yeah. was, you know, she heard me out. She was cool. Well, at least you weren't in there like yelling. I'm sure they have to deal with some lunatics oh, in there, yeah. man. Yeah, they won't. They won't stand that. Yeah, <laughs> they got the airport security. Will get throw your Absolutely. ass right the hell back out. Take your belt. Jail's a couple blocks away, I guess. Yeah, so. right. Yeah, you get a little out of line. It's not that much effort for them to throw you in the slammer for a couple hours. But uh, speaking of a couple hours, uh, we've almost filled two hours. We have uh, five minutes of of material to fill. Well, for, uh, you know, I feel like. We've had some pretty good conversations tonight, and it's been kind of on a whim. You know what? I like you, Moose. You know, we're we're friends, man. I like you, too. We have too. a good thing going, dude. We, we might as well be public about it. We might as well just come on out and say it. Come out and say it. Um, I, I think that part of it is that it's just the conversation flows. You know, we're in the office all day. We talk about things. It's not like we're coming in here cold, really, you know. But That's but, true. But That's so, true. Trevor presented to me this idea where him and an old partner would would each think of like X amount of topics to talk about on the show, okay? And but then they would not tell the other person. So the other person uh, was coming into that topic cold while the person that brought up the topic then knew what they were going to say. So you're kind of getting a fresh take on a pre-prepared topic. That might not, that might be something we could try. Yeah, I like that. You know, if we each think of just like three topics that could talk for like four minutes. And just, yeah, I mean, we'd be like real radio personalities then, huh? Oh, yeah. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Dude, it's been fun. There's our ghost host. Our ghost host over there, yes, the Corey Montgomery Band. Uh, they're at home cleaning, something like that. I don't really know. But they're not here and won't be here till 930, so they are not yeah. going to be on the air tonight. However... We were on the air tonight. We've had a great time with you. Stay tuned. Next week, we've got some more exciting guests. We're going to do another ec- episode of Hack It or Axe It. Uh, we got a suggestion from a listener. Got to leave in Antwerp, Belgium, that we call our new segment Fun Mail Voices. Fun Mail Voices? I think was what she said. It was something mm-hmm. along those lines. 
I'm not going to lie, got to leave. I think you can do a little better. Yeah. How about like voices in my head? There, that's, see, that's, yeah. that's got a ring to it. It's a little... I it is. Know. It's true because you're putting them right in your head, man. It's got to be an appropriate title for making fun of people that leave ridiculous voicemails. And it happens. And it, it happens. happens quite a bit. We had like three of them today. But we have to we have to bleep out their names and their phone numbers, which yeah. they use a lot. You know, yeah. When they're leaving a message. Yeah. And and I didn't get a chance to do that today. It's all right. It's been a heck of a week. Uh, but these things are accumulating. We have like I have a. Uh, Folder is full of stuff to share, you know. We just have to, uh, you know, get our groove going. All right. Well, next week we will have something for you on the uh, fun mail voices. We'll call it that until we get a better name. Uh, thank you, God Alive, for that for the suggestion. We will see you next week here, 6 to 8 p.m. on Music Buzz Live Radio. My name is Moose CT over there on the boards. We will see you next week. Peace. We're in the early stages. It's going to get fucking really nice. Oh, yeah. We love you. Long time. <laughs>